Welcome to Hurray IELTS Writing Task 1. This is report writing. Comparison between pie chart and bar graph. Here is a description of what this type of task might contain. You could get a combination of a pie chart and a bar graph. You need to compare and contrast information. Ideally, you are suggested to write 160 to 180 word and summarize and report the main features. It is suggested that you use the passive voice while doing so. Before that, make sure that when you're writing, you keep the four important criteria in mind and they are task achievement, which basically talks about how you should analyze all points of the task and ensure that you write all of the features and properly give a good structure. Coherence and cohesion is again connected to task achievement. In fact, they all are. You must ensure that you write proper sentences using simple as well as complex sentences and connect your ideas properly using the right linking phrases or transitional words. Grammatical range and accuracy includes all parts of grammar, that is tenses, articles, prepositions, as well as parts of speech. In IELTS writing, especially academic report writing, using good vocabulary will always give you a higher score. So lexical resource is the fourth criteria and probably one of the most important criteria. Now here is a sample question of what this type of question might look like and that is as you can see on the top you have a pie chart depicting the persons arrested in five years ending 1994 it is further divided into males and females whereas below that you will see a bar graph which details reasons for the most recent arrest now if you observe carefully while well, the pie chart has gotten two divisions and percentages the bar graph has got many other components so when you're doing so remember you have 20 minutes on this task read the title or the task given very very carefully and remember that you have to write the main features here you must write at least 150 words that is your minimum although you are suggested to write 160 to 180 words let us move further and have a look at the sample answer Before we proceed to the sample answer, here is the structure. Now, paragraph 1 is your opening paragraph. You must use synonyms to rephrase the topic given to you. In paragraph 2, you could mention the overview where you will mention two of the main features. Following this, you have body paragraph 1, which is your main body paragraph. It, this will be your third paragraph. Write the first and second main features here, compare and contrast. Similarly, move to paragraph 4, which would be your main body paragraph 2. Again, write the first and second features of the second image given to you. Once you're done, use the closing paragraph. Ensure that you use the word overall. Mention one striking feature of the graph. Finally, we come to our sample answer. This is what it looks like. Now, again, if you notice, you have words like depicts. If you want a better score, you must use these kind of words. You can also use shows, but that would keep you at a level of probably six. Now, this will consist, the first line will consist of your main features, as you can see, the title. Okay, and as you read further, you will find that the main features are also mentioned. Chart proves that more males and females are engaged in public drinking and this seems to be a common factor but as you read further you will find that there have been uh, percentages mentioned of males and females make sure that you mention the first image talk about it in detail make comparison and contrasts use good language and vocabulary as you move further in the next paragraph, do the same. Again, use language of comparison and contrast. Words like higher than or larger than or fairly similar at approximately 18 percentage. Whereas 
whereas again gives you the idea that something has been previously compared so go through this this would be a good way for you to understand how to properly structure your answer make sure you conclude properly but the important thing to note here is do not miss out on any of the features the main features should be mentioned at the beginning the rest of the percentages should be used to corroborate or give proof of what you're saying here are some strategies to do this type of question correctly and effectively you must state the clear overall progression and organization this basically means that you must properly align the information given in the graphs to the ones given in terms of writing so a good way to do this is to use the first 2 or 3 minutes to make a rough note write down the points that you will be mentioning in each particular paragraph then use proper sentence structure and linking phrases to connect them together once you're done ensure that whatever points you have put down also includes the main features this could be the name the location the timeline etc clearly compare the first image with the second if time and location is given ensure that you note it down and you mention it while writing to do this effectively use the language of location to understand positioning of things or language of comparison and contrast to show changes or transformation this could be increasing or decreasing or even steady it is always a good idea to use good comp complex sentences as well as simple sentences you will get more points for scoring in terms of grammar in this particular case when writing use the past and present tenses keeping the timeline given in mind on the left you have language of change on the right you have comparison and contrast you can use this kind of vocabulary it will really really increase your lexical resources score so when giving examples of something that is increasing you could say gradually increasing if there is a fall you can mention a slight fall slight is an adjective describing the type of fall if you can see that the graph keeps increasing once again you can use the word kept rising if you're talking about the end or a, a level that it has reached you can use the word reached a peak similarly you can use other phrases listed below when it comes to comparison and contrast using words like however in contrast on the other hand whereas while will really really help you understand and give you a clearer perspective about what is happening but make sure you include them and that is the most important thing now here are some words that denote time and how we can connect them along with words on observation so on the left if you're talking about something that is beginning you can say to begin with or if you're talking about what comes next you can say following this or next if you are given stages you could mention in the subsequent stage then followed by etc when observing you can use words like estimates findings calculations you could put it in sentence form you could say based on this estimate or based on the findings or based on the calculations or the analysis between the two graphs shows that or the analysis between the two images shows that when making a comparison again you could use words and phrases like in the first case when referring to the first image or in the second case when referring to the second image similarly you can use the rest of the words now there are often problems that students face so below are listed some common problems as well as solutions to those problems what do you do when you write too much mostly students are found to be writing too much because there are two images so they feel that they should include each and everything and that results in a very long piece of writing and you could lose the coherence in such a situation also not summarizing and reporting the main features as asked is another issue 
So the solution to this is pick up two of the most obvious features that you notice, summarize and report only them. Then you can elaborate on them further. The next one is the inability to find the main features. Because of two images, students often struggle with the idea as to what exactly the main features are. A good way to solve this is to look for visual clues. Look at the fall and drop or major trends or changes and any obvious comparisons that can be made between either the two graphs or within the same graph. Again, the third problem is not grouping information into paragraphs. There's often a confusion regarding this. It is always good to follow a structure. There's often also a tendency to group data from different graphs into one paragraph. Do not do that. A good solution to this would be to take down points based on the paragraph structure as has been discussed before. Don't write about both the paragraphs in one paragraph. That is not a good idea. Follow the structure very, very strictly. The final point here is making comparisons. Sometimes students include irrelevant data. The questions may or may not have a relevant comparisons at times and writing about comparisons when there is actually no comparison that again will affect your coherence. So it is suggested that ignore if there are no obvious comparisons and at times you will find that the comparison is in the same graph. So when you're preparing in the first two three minutes make sure you note down all of these points so that your writing goes smoothly and you don't miss out on any of the criteria. Now here are some general writing tips that you can use. Use apt vocabulary or correct vocabulary depending on the kind of image given to you and the kind of situation you see in front of you. Do not use contracted form of words like don't or won't or can't. Use the full form. Do not, will not, cannot. Identify the keywords mentioned. Look at the title very closely. Look at the question very closely. Analyze it thoroughly. Analyze the topic next. Use again the first two or three minutes. And I am constantly stressing on this as it is very, very important. This will determine the structure of your graph and also the order in which you're writing, the organization and the layout. Use the passive form wherever possible. While doing so, ensure that you use the correct pronouns. Transitional words, if required to show a transition or a change must be used. It will increase your score in the lexical resource. It will also help you to properly write a coherent structure. Ensure that you mention all the points given. You must maintain the academic style. Do not use informal language or slang. Make sure your ideas are logically organized. That is the end. Thank you.